Hello, I'm hematologist oncologist Dr. Tony Talibi, and oftentimes I order multiple biopsies of my patients. Today I'm here with Dr. Jason Salsamendi, assistant professor of radiology at University of Miami, and I'd like to discuss image guided needle biopsy. Dr. Salsamendi, thank you for being here. Thank you. Would and you just please explain to our patients what is image guided biopsy? I'm glad that you asked that, and I, I think it's an area that we need to emphasize and, and educate our, our patients about because it's some procedure that's commonly performed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's, uh, it's part of it's going to be a part of our practice, and it's very helpful for their management. Mm -hmm. uh, image guided biopsy is a way that we use either CT or ultrasound to guide a small needle into a lesion in the body that we're not sure is cancer or not, or some other process. And we take a small sample so the pathologist can evaluate it to determine the nature of that lesion. And in a patient that already has a known diagnosis, it may help change the stage of the disease. Or in a patient that doesn't have a diagnosis, it may be the first way that they know if or not they have a certain cancer. So it's uh, very critical in our workup. Mm -hmm. And can you pretty much use this procedure for any part of the body? Uh, we can use this procedure in, in most parts of the, the body, uh, neck, chest, abdomen, pelvis, and extremities, uh, and superficial areas as well, mm -hmm. uh, with the appropriate set of imaging and uh, set of needles so we can uh, access a lot of lesions mm -hmm. safely. How should the patient prepare the night before and the morning of the operation? The night before, we ask them not to have dinner, but then to refrain from eating after midnight, and also we'll contact them to make sure that we can stop certain medications that they're taking them, like aspirin and Plavix or if they're on a blood thinner to change their regimen mm -hmm. so that they can adequately tolerate the procedure. And uh, during the, the day of the procedure, they arrive and they are interviewed by one of our uh, physicians uh, just to check over their medical history mm -hmm. and medications once more, look for allergies, and we, we proceed with the procedure from there, which usually takes about like 15 minutes to half an hour or an hour in total for most of our biopsy procedures, not all. Mm -hmm. What if the patient has allergies or is claustrophobic? Uh, in terms of allergies, uh, most of our procedures don't require too much medication and rarely, rarely do we need to get contrast. Uh, but if they do have allergy, we either avoid that medication or if we have to give it, we pre-medicate them. If it's a serious allergy, we do a regimen overnight with pre-medication with a steroid. If it's a mild allergy, we may be able to get them Benadryl and a steroid just during the procedure. Nice. What if they're claustrophobic? And if they're claustrophobic, uh, again, that topic is, a, is usually don't, even claustrophobic patients usually don't experience those that effect during our treatment, mm -hmm. uh, during the biopsies, because most of them are done under ultrasound in the open space. And in CT, they're only within the CT gantry for just a moment in time just to scan to verify the needle location. And the rest of the procedures perform in the open space as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, the, the effect of claustrophobia is really not realized too much uh, with this kind of technique. Excellent. What should the patient experience during the procedure and after the procedure? Uh, well, during the procedure, they will expect to receive conscious sedation for most of our needle biopsies, except for some of our superficial fine needle aspirations of the thyroid where we typically just give lidocaine. Uh, so with the conscious sedation, they'll feel a twilight state of mind. Mm -hmm. They'll have an IV in place for fluids to be given if necessary. And they'll have monitoring devices to check for heart rate, respirations, blood pressure. Uh, and then during the procedure, they'll be administered lidocaine or some equivalent to the skin surface to, um, just to get local anesthesia. And uh, we proceed with the biopsy with under ultrasound or CT guidance, usually which doesn't take too long. Mm -hmm. What signs or symptoms should prompt a patient to either call their physician or go to the emergency room after the procedure? So directly after the procedure, our patients are monitored um, for two to four hours, depending on the nature of the biopsy. And typically after that, uh, if they're doing quite well, uh, they'll be fine when they go home. And they go home without an issue. But uh, if we do a biopsy of the lung or a critical area, there may be some delayed complications that they should be aware of. For lung biopsies, there's the incidence that we call pneumothorax, which is lung collapse. And most of the time, it ha would happen during the procedure or right afterwards. But if they were to develop shortness of breath, you know, difficulty breathing or, or coughing blood or something of that nature, then they should come mm -hmm. seek a med medical um, attention. For other areas of the body, if they, they may have a risk of bleeding. And if they do so, uh, if they feel lightheaded, 
uh, weak, tired, then maybe a sign of internal bleeding. Mm. And that may also be accompanied by a sense of a worsening pain in that area of the biopsy. All those complications are very rare, but it's something that we want all the patients to be aware about. Awesome. And is there anyone who is not a candidate for this procedure? Uh, most patients are a candidate with proper optimization. Sometimes we need to involve other specialties like anesthesia to get the procedure done. However, with that said, there may be some patients where positioning is an issue, they can't tolerate a prone or supine position, and those scenarios, uh, it may be difficult to mm -hmm. perform the biopsy in conventional technique. Fortunately, we do a lot of our biopsies of ultrasound, which is expanded an envelope, it's opened the envelope, allowing us to do a lot more procedures and unconventional positions that are suitable for the patients. Well, thank you so much. Okay. Thank you for watching. We hope this has been educational for you.